Hello foot nerds and any other humans who are listening to this. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all having a great Thursday. Chief Nick checking in here on June 24th. Uh, it's super sunny. It's really windy in Ottawa today, but it's super sunny. Just went for a long walk. The calf is coming along nice. Today was the first day I could walk at like an increased pace and not have like a limp. And it sort of really emphasized the fine tuning needed after a significant injury, where it's like your body picks up all these adaptations that it implements as you're kind of recovering and as your movement patterns are able to, to change. But a lot of times we're left with those negative adaptations that served us at one point, no longer serve us, and require us to sort of mindfully troubleshoot. And, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do is go on a walk with no audio. Like I often go for a walk and listen to a podcast um, or an audio book and go for a walk with nothing and really just think about how am I moving my legs? How are my feet moving? What is the, what is the last little hiccup that's in my gait pattern and how do I sort of like um, give my body different commands to experiment with sort of getting through those restrictions. So nice day. Today I got a couple things to chat about. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is health, the notion of health by subtraction. And I think today instead of even talking about it conceptually, I'll just give some practical examples. And you know, my whole thought process and, and sort of what we've learned within the footnote community is that oftentimes health doesn't require you to add more things. Uh, health actually comes from subtracting things that are creating obstacles to your health, right? Our bodies intu intuitively want to be healthy. They want to be, they want to function optimally. And the only reason they don't is because we put obstacles in the way that confuse our body or that prevent it from functioning optimally. So this whole notion of health by subtraction is number one, it's way easier to take shit out than it is to put extra stuff in. Um, but number two, removing the negatives is actually way more potent than adding more things. And so pragmatic examples for three pillars, movement pillar, sleep, and food. For movement pillar, the chief thing you need to subtract in order to move better and have a body that has better, uh, better movement patterns is literally just sitting in chairs. And in order to subtract, and you don't, have to, you don't have to eliminate all chairs, although that would be good. I've done that, it works great, it's amazing. I don't actually miss chairs. Uh, in fact, when I go places where there's only chairs, I'm like, ah, this is weird. I gotta figure out a funky way to sit in this chair. Um, you don't have to eliminate chairs right off the get-go, but you do have to sit a little bit less in the chair. In order for you to sit a little bit less in the chair, you have to know how much time you're spending sitting in chairs. And so this exercise, in order to do this effectively, as sort of like your own health scientist, is it really helps to do a, sit, a chair sitting inventory. Okay, you can pick a day. I think ideally it's probably a week because then you can average it out and, and include weekends and include different work days. But how much time do you spend sitting in a chair per day on average? Okay, um, and that's a really good start because if it's like, okay, I got my baseline. I sit in a chair for eight hours during the day. That includes the car, that includes at meals, that includes at work, all the above, on the bus, whatever it might be. Um, we accumulate way more sitting than what we think. I sit in a chair for eight hours. My goal next week is seven hours. So where am I gonna take that hour from? Right? Maybe it's an hour that I usually sit on the couch at the end of the day watching Netflix. That's gonna be my subtraction and I'm gonna sit on the floor or I'm gonna sit, I'm just gonna sit differently. Um, Cause really anything except for the chair position is fine. It actually doesn't matter what you replace it with. What matters is that you're doing one hour less of chair adaptation time, of time that your body's adapting to the chair position, which you're not doing on purpose, but that's what's happening. Okay, so help by subtraction, that's for movement. For food, pick the one food that you know is not good for you, but you can't help but eat and eliminate it. Forget about it, don't have it available. Don't buy it at the grocery store, don't have it in a cupboard. If it's not there, you won't miss it. And so health by subtraction is like, you can automatically build a better relationship with food by eliminating the most, by eliminating the shittiest food that you eat on a regular basis, right? The thing that is most removed from natural, whole, nutrient dense food. Okay, so that's for food. And then for sleep, uh, one of the best things I ever did was subtract Netflix from my life. I love Netflix. Who doesn't like Netflix? But if Netflix is becoming something where that's what you're watching every night before you go to bed, and we know that screens before bed are not good, we know that shutting down and having a pre-bed routine is really, really good to ensure that you're able to get into a sleep state, 
Um, you know, whether it's eliminating screens for half an hour before bed or literally just you want to do radical subtraction, take Netflix out of the equation. You'll have a massive amount of extra time uh, in your hands. It's great. It's like I, I almost didn't know what to do with my time when I got rid of Netflix. And it was so much more time to go for a walk or to read a book or just to do nothing. Um, play on a beam, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, health by subtraction. So remove the chairs, doesn't matter what you replace it with, but you have to do a chair sitting inventory to actually know, you know what, how, where you're gonna tweak that. With food, subtract the food that is not good for you. You know which foods those are. I eat those foods fairly frequently, but I know I'm always working to eat less of them. And that's really the key. It's like, you can eat the delicious you know, mouth pleasure that has zero nutrient value. If it makes you feel shitty all the time, that's not good. If you're doing that because you feel shitty all the time, probably good to find out why you feel shitty instead of continuing to eat those foods. But at the end of the day, health by subtraction when applied to food is take out the one food that you know you shouldn't be eating, that you eat a lot of or you eat frequently and don't have it available. Just make a decision. Choose, take the adult step and say, I'm gonna to decide to stop eating this. Maybe it only lasts a month, but it'll be a good experiment. Um, health by subtraction with food. And then health by subtraction with sleep is subtract screens for the last 30 minutes before bed, uh, or just subtract your Netflix subscription. Sorry, Reed Hastings, but like Netflix competes with sleep and it's not cool because people aren't sleeping and they feel like shit. So, had to say it. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the body as an impartial adapter. And what I mean by this is your body adapts based on what, it does not care what you want to do with your body. All it cares is the signals that it's receiving on a daily basis. Okay, so if you're spending a lot of time sitting in chairs, the signal you're giving your body is that it needs to be really good at sitting in chairs. Not that it needs to be good at walking or running or doing squats or not having back pain. It doesn't give a shit about any of that. All it cares is I'm being told to be good at sitting in chairs, therefore I'm going to be really good at sitting in chairs. And I'm not even gonna to care to be good at any of the other things because clearly this human is telling me they're not important, okay? So the body as an impartial adapter means that all of the adaptations that happen in your body, whether that's your calves tightening up, your quads tightening up, your hip flexors becoming really tight, reducing your hip mobility, having weak feet, these are all adaptations that have happened because of what you've been telling your, the signals you've been giving to your body. Okay, and so really what, it, what understanding this can do is let you realize that, wow, when I'm sitting in a chair, I'm training my body to be good at sitting in a chair. If I do less of that, it will automatically be able to have more bandwidth to apply to being good at other movements. And you know, if you wanna be good at running, subtract, oh, no, that's not a good analogy. Because I was gonna say, if you wanna be good at running, run more, but if you run with chairitis, it's not gonna work out very well. Um, but just know that all adaptations are neutral and we don't, we think of adaptations as like I lift a weight with my arm and do bicep curls. The adaptation is my bicep gets bigger, right? I get bigger muscles, they're stronger. But what we don't think of is the negative spectrum of adaptations where things we're doing, behaviors we're doing with our bodies are causing adaptations that we might not want, right? The adaptation of being good at sitting in a chair is a significant obstacle to being good at any th other movements, right? If you wanna run, the obstacle of being adapted to sitting in a chair is gonna hinder that in a big way. Probably result in pain and, that, that, and it will take away a huge, it'll steal away a huge amount of performance. Um, sitting in a chair creates the adaptation that negates being able to build up your butt for squats. Like they're opposites, right? Chair equals butt shrinking, squats equals butt growing. You're trying to do one, but you're doing this one all the time and getting frustrated and looking for the miracle fix. But a lot of times it's just the behaviors we're doing without realizing it that are causing us problems. And one of the big things with us at TFC is trying to make sure people understand that sitting in a chair for long periods of time every day does have a consequence. It's not a direct parallel. You're not, you know, like when you're getting pain with running, your body's not gonna say, it's because you sit in chairs. It's because you sit in chairs. Like it doesn't say that. So the ownership is on you to sort of understand that the body adapts impartially to whatever you expose it to. And if you make sure you expose the body to better inputs, it will adapt uh, to be better. That's really, all it boils down to. And then the last two things, real quick, because I'm already at 10 minutes, um, is the notion of beam play and ground living. Thinking of those two things as recalibration. I just did a video for um, 
this uh, event that a bunch of NFL tight ends are going to called Tight End U, Tight End U, Tight End Unite, T E U. Yeah, I think it's Tight Ends Unite, and uh, and the the big thing with that is you know or the big thing with beam work is that really what it's doing is recalibrating your hips and your feet, right? We get out of, we get out of calibration, we get out of balance from things that we do to our bodies. Like, you know, wear stiff shoes, your, your feet tend to start to get really, really stiff. Spend a lot of time in chairs, your hips become imbalanced. The anterior hip gets much tighter, um, gets really, really tight and inhibits the function of your posterior hip. So you're kind of out of calibration. And time on a beam is really just you know, if you look at what balance is, balance is thousands of tiny micro adjustments per second of your body seeking an optimal state to make you not fall over, for example. And so really every second you're on a beam is helping to recalibrate your body so that it's able to do a massive variety of movements, right? When you're on the floor, the fact that you're having to ad adjust and adopt a bunch of different positions is recalibrating the mobility of your hip joints. Um, that get out of balance from being in one fixed position for a long period of time, right? They create, the, the body as an impartial adapter means that sitting in a chair is gonna make you adapt to the chair position. Being able to go on the floor and, and essentially forcing yourself to adapt to a wide variety of positions recalibrates your hips so that it has more options available, right? And so beam work and ground living, spending time on the floor instead of in chairs and spending time, uh, in, let's not even call it beam work, this is called balance work, uh, is really your body being able to recalibrate itself so that all the different systems can speak to each other, right? When you're on a, when, when I'm on a beam, my foot is having to do a much better job at talking to my hips so they can work together to stop me from falling over. Whereas most of our workouts, we kind of isolate, right? I'm working on my bicep or my quads or whatever it might be, usually single muscles or single systems, uh, when in reality the body is an integrated system and it has to function as a whole. And so when we do these very simple um, but very powerful things like standing on a balance beam or sitting on the floor, we're giving our body a chance to recalibrate. We're giving it a better set of inputs. And so it's pretty important stuff. Uh, and it's super simple. And it, you know, like balancing on one leg with your eyes closed is free. Anyone can do it. And if it's really hard, it means you gotta do it more. It doesn't mean you, you, know, you don't wanna shy away from it. Although I know the things I suck at, I don't really wanna do more of them, but I, but, you know, I got to a point where I realized like, the things I'm not good at are actually the most important things for me to at least get to a certain standard, right? I don't have to be you know, the master of some obscure task, but like, if a fundamental movement is difficult for me and I know I should be able to do it, I should probably work to getting it to a certain baseline level and then move on. Um, because if I encounter that in a sport or an activity and I don't have competence there, it might give me some big problems. So thank you for listening to that. I hope I didn't speak too fast. I tried to fit, you know, I thought I'd be able to fit this stuff in 10 minutes, but went a little bit over. Um, but I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you to everyone who turned it, tuned into the nerd zoom call this morning. It's always great seeing uh, familiar faces and excited to have some podcasts about Bitcoin. Um, because I think it's a really important part of health is financial health and financial literacy. Um, and I don't think that's taught, I, I, you know, in school, even though it should be. And so, yeah, thanks for listening and I'll catch you next week. Ciao.